This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl on beautiful Hamilton Island with silver medalists in the 470, Matt Belcher and Will Ryan and their coach, Victor Kovalenko. Guys, congratulations. Yeah, thanks. Nice to be here. Yeah, it's nice to see you here and I know a lot of people have followed your journey, especially, <laughs> no, I know he's a bit modest this one, especially Matt, I mean given that you were the gold medalist at the previous Olympics and the 470 has been so successful in Beijing and then London and now here, how does it feel to have come home with another medal? I mean that's three in a row for Australia in terms of medals in the 470. Yeah, it's, I mean it's really special you know, to be able to, to be an Olympic medalist, um, you know, our goal was, was to win, um, you know, we're, we were a little bit disappointed but we're really proud of the campaign we put together and, and to win three world championships and, and medal in, in the other and, and you know be an Olympic medalist. It's, um, it's a pretty cool legacy that Australian 470s have and um, it's largely from, from this man and uh, for me it's just a privilege to start with Will. You know it's been an amazing four years and I really really loved every minute of it. Yeah Will I think you had a, a difficult position to fill that of a gold medalist crew being Malcolm Page but you've done fantastically. I know you guys have been so successful over the past four years and to cap it off with a medal after not the easiest regatta how does that feel for you? Yeah, no, it's certainly a, sp a special moment. Um, when, when we paired up, I said I had to do it my own way. I couldn't try to uh, recreate Malcolm. He was a, an amazing crew and, and the most successful 470 crew I think the world's ever had. So yeah. always had to do it my own way. And I think we went out there this four years and, and really, as Matt said, put together a really good campaign. And when it comes down to one week at the end of all that and, and things don't quite go your way, it's, it's a tough pill to swallow. But no, we, we really, we sailed well and the Croatians also sailed very well. So I'm... Um, Happy to be here and, and happy to have a medal and looking forward to seeing what the future might hold. Well, that's, that's fantastic to hear and I know that it must be so difficult given you went so well over those, those four years. And Victor, you watched them as well. How proud of them are you though that they did come away with a silver medal? Uh, I'm really extremely proud and happy with their performance in the last race, with their like a broken mainsail. Yeah. They were sailing quite fast. Not quite fast, quite smart. We are not happy not to win the gold, but we are happy to be silver. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I understand. I, I think, oh, well, I don't understand completely because I've never been in that position, but I know how hard you guys are working over that four years to win a gold medal. I think the whole Australian sailing team really had a rougher start than what was expected, but you all closed so powerfully. Do you think you lifted off each other's energy in that situation? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's, a small, it's a small team and, and uh, there's only 11 of us, but for seven to come away with medals is pretty phenomenal achievement for the team. And um, it's just a tough environment, right? You know, it, um, everything that was coming out and there was always changes every day, whether it was weather or, or just onshore stuff. Um, and I think it's a credit to, to the management and our support team to really help um, lift us when we needed to and support us when, when we were down. And um, for me to, you know, to stay with Jason and Tom in the same house, it was, it was cool. You know, we had six weeks together and um, we had our, our good moments, our bad moments. And it was really special to, to, for all of us to go through that journey. And um, nice that we came away with, with some good results. Yeah, no, it's, it's beautiful to see and I, um, I, know, I know that the support team of the Australian sailing team is huge and you also had a lot of family there. How was that for you, Will? Yeah, fantastic to compete alongside my sister Jamie. It was a unique opportunity, I think, for only first sailing siblings in 40 years or so for Australia. So um, a really special moment and to have them all there supporting us. Um, they're the ones that put in huge sacrifices to, to give us the opportunity to, to get to do what we do and um, to let them see the end result is, is a really special time for us. Now, Victor, uh, you've been an incredibly successful coach. What is it? I mean, you said that these guys are so smart and often people say that you have to be smart, not fast, to win. Did you see that in these two when you were putting the combination together? What, what was it that you looked for? Because obviously they still managed to finish strong and, and get a medal in a situation where some other people may not have had that mental toughness. Uh, yes, exactly. They are, I'm very lucky to work with these two unique people <laughs> and to have them, especially to have them together with one boat, it's amazing and every day, every day, not even at the games, every day even when I'm training with them, I'm awarded to watch their phenomenal sailing, to watch their movements in the boards, to watch the perfection of sailing every day and, and uh, in competitions especially. Olympic Games was very special competition for all of us and a lot of sailors, they were under huge, big pressure. And uh, 
creations they were selling very well and also and also to say about Greeks they are also very very good sellers and uh, then they came back at the games with their medal that's fantastic we really admire all winners and we really respect all sailors who are selling in the games and it was a unique experience for all of us and I hope we bring all of this experience multiplied by our hard work back to Tokyo. I don't know, I was going to ask you that um, leading it's on to Tokyo. Well, <laughs> I know, he's encouraging you to go again. I know, I know, I know. And I guess it sort of gets addictive as well uh, when, when maybe you don't get the gold that you guys were after. And I think that's a question that everybody wants to ask you is um, would you consider going again? Because, I mean, this would be your third. Yeah, you know, um, for us it's just a unique environment, you know. Um, to be able to have the individuals that we have, you know, to, to be able to sail with Will and, and, and Victor and, and our team, um, it's just it's phenomenal level of sailing and I really, we really enjoy that. Uh, we need a good rest at the moment, so we haven't really made any, yeah. any plans or anything and um, we don't know what the classes will be for Tokyo as well mm -hmm. uh, with world sailing, um, reviewing them in, in November. Yeah. So, yeah, we're just actually enjoying, enjoying the moment, enjoying our four years <laughs> of the work that we put together and... Um, for sure, we're going to have a few phone calls from from Victor, and uh, we'll <laughs> see see how we yeah, yeah see how we go. I mean, now if it was easy, everybody would do it, and and I think that just shows the caliber of, of all three of you in that you've um you've you've done so well in, in this situation. So congratulations from me, and I know everybody's yeah. so proud of you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks very much. Thanks. Well done. Thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> no This is Nick Douglas for Adventures of a Sailor Girl at the Middle Harbour Yacht Club after the first announcement for some Australian sailors that have been doing very well this year. They've secured their spot for the Rio 2016 Olympic Games. Victor, the start of, you know, a another step of the journey. This is not the start, this is just one more step, one more step. step. And uh, they are great sailors and all of them, they definitely they deserve to be there and a lot of people around they know this one because all of us we were supporting them for years and years and we were uh, we were very happy with their top results and we were a little bit s sad with their failure sometimes but we knew that every failure bring make them stronger and make, make them more experienced and now they are very close to their boats which will bring them a good speed to reach their goals yeah and uh, and now the the olympic journey i guess y they've got to work so hard just to even tick that box of getting to the olympics and then the the ability to get there and to and to win a medal as well is a whole nother ball game. Yeah, this is not only to take the, the boxes, but this mm. is also next level of confidence, yeah. next level uh, of confirmation that they are on the right track and they are, they are moving in the right direction. Mm. Because the early nomination, this is indication of their talents, their commitments and their professionalism. And, and for you personally, you've been working really closely with Matt and Will, and you've worked with Matt on the on the prior Olympics, and you worked with Malcolm Page with Matt and Malcolm and Nathan prior to that. Is it really nice to have watched that that journey develop with the male 470? Absolutely, like absolutely, like it was very difficult for Will to step in mm. in the shoes of our greatest sailor of Malcolm Page. Two Olympic golds, six times world champion, and many, many times winners of all regattas. But Will was always next to him, next to him in the boat, next to him in the dining room, next <laughs> to him in the gym, and he was absorbing all of his philosophies, all of his knowledge and his spirit. And now he is outstanding sailor himself, and uh, he is world champion every year, he is winner of test event every year, he won all regattas in Rio and they are, they are on the track. It's That's interesting because I think some people often say Will is Matt's new partner in the 470 but I think he lost the new title quite a while ago, it's been a few years now. 
they won their first regatta. First time, mm. first time they were sailing together was 2010. Exactly. The four Olympic Games Five years. in London. 2010, it was their first regatta together. They went to International Spring Cup, which was a huge big event in Europe, which collect all world champions and Olympic medalists, and they won it. Mm -hmm. And after this, like, for most of them, it was like a dream to sail together. And uh, now, one more dream became reality. And I'm sure a lot of the sailors think it's a dream to be able to be coached by you as well, Victor. It's not only coached by me. We have very, very... what. I was very proud today that all these guys were in front of us, mm. but the system mm. which helped them to be the best is very solid, very professional, very... We, we said system produced champions. They are extremely talented, but now they are not only extremely talented, they are, they are champions. And the system also confirmed to Australian taxpayers that every dollar they spend into Australian sailing team will be converted to the gold. That can't help but make everybody smile, I think, Victor. That sounds really good leading into Rio. So hopefully I get to catch up in between uh, now and then with you and also with the amazing athletes and, um, and the support team as well. There were so many of them here today, which was fantastic to see. Thank you for following us. Thank you for being part of our team okay. for a long time and we wish you success also in, oh my in your very important job to make our sport our sparkling sport more visible. Oh you are amazing. Thank you Victor. That's brilliant. Oh you're a sweetheart. Thank you. This is Matt Belch and you're listening to uh, the Adventures of a Sailor Girl. This is Nick Douglas Adventures of a Sailor Girl with Matt Belcher Congratulations on winning the Australian 470 Championships again with Will Ryan. How's it going? Yeah, good. Um, yeah, obviously pretty excited you know, to, uh, to compete on, on home waters in the Gold Coast. It's yeah. kind of nice to, uh, that 15 years it's been since I've uh, competed and been at home. So, it was, yeah, it was great. Great to showcase, you know, showcase the club and, and come away with a win. That is fantastic. And, and good fleet numbers and the girls went well as well. Nice to see the Ryan double with Sasha and Amelia yeah. pulling off the female. Yeah, I think the Ryan household was pretty pretty happy after that. I think mean, they also did the double last year as well. So, um, you know, uh, they're, yeah, they're, they're doing really well. Um, obviously, the, the numbers were a little bit down for the women and yeah. something that the Australian Sailing team are trying to develop and, um, and increase. And we were fortunate that we had a, a really good men's uh, 470 draft program, which has been running since November. Wow. Uh, so for us to, to see the, you know, the future talent coming through, it uh, was fantastic to race with them and spend a bit of time with, with the guys. Yeah, awesome. I know it's, it's really great to see that you guys are, are not only pushing yourselves really hard, but you're pushing the entire fleet in Australia really hard, which ultimately is only going to help you guys in, in the years going forward. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's, that's how we started. And, um, you know, there's so much success in Australian 470. You know, that's obviously largely through Victor and, and the support of the Australian talent team. So, you know, we have a responsibility. You know, I've been in the class for a long time now, and it's great for me to, to see the future. And, and, you know, they've got their responsibility, and hopefully... They can, you know, continue the success. Yeah, that's that's awesome to see. Now it's been a little while since we've caught up. I think the last time was at the Yachting Australia Awards when yourself and Will took out the the Male Sailor of the Year. My gosh, so much has happened in between. I think well, let's let's start with uh, the Miami World Cup, maybe, or I don't know, your Rio training camp in December. It's all a little bit overwhelming. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my son in the background. I'm not sure if you can hear that. No, that's um, awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, since, since those awards, I think um, would have been in October. We've, we've done a lot of travel. Um, yeah. Probably the most I've done for quite quite some time. So we um, obviously most recently went to Miami, and it was great for us just to get that level of competition. And I mean, as you know, it's hard in Australia. Uh, we have to travel a lot of distance to, to get that yeah. competition. And, um, you know, Miami was great. We had a lot of uh, the top guys. Unfortunately, we didn't come away with a win. Mm. Um, but, you know, we're really happy with our performance and, you know, and, and comfortable, where, you know, where, where we're at. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's interesting because I know that you and Will have had a very, very successful year. Do you think you learn more from, 
from a second sometimes or do you still like I know I know you like to get the win but sometimes you can learn a lot from coming second oh ab- absolutely um, I mean your mistakes is you know is where where you're learning and you know yeah. whether we're winning the event or, or not it's it's not so it's not really the you know the focus everything yeah. for us is, is obviously the game's result and, and everything in the middle is, is just trying to get it as, as best that we can and and learn as much as as we can and we we certainly separate the results um, you know, from from these events, and we just try and really focus on our performance and how well we sailed and what we can do yeah. do better. And we learned a lot in Miami. Um, it was a you know three week camp for us in mm. that sense. And um, yeah, we we came over the win with the North Americans, which um, which was a, you know we're happy about. And um, yeah, the competition is increasing, and we just got to keep working hard and, and try and uh, and try and get as as good as we can. Yeah, definitely. And I think if you can focus on the learning that. That keeps you motivated as well all the way through. Even if you are, you know, winning or coming second or coming top three all the time, you're not going to get complacent if all you're focusing on is the learning and the development phase of things. Absolutely, you know, it's, it, it is it is more enjoyable when you are winning and you're yeah. in front of the fleet. Um, but you know, it was was a good a good lesson for us, and um, you know, the fleet are really um, are really stepping it up, and we're just uh, just got to keep keep working hard. And um, but in saying that, you know, we're, we are very comfortable where we're at, and we. Um, you know, we had our reasons and, and look forward to, to to our own training, I guess, over the next next month or so, and for uh, rejoining the tour. Awesome! And you did uh, you did come away with a win in the Abu Dhabi World Cup final, which was fantastic to see. The first uh, World Cup final of its kind. How, how was that event for you guys? Yeah, um, you know, we 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 weren't sure whether to, to head over or not. Um, yeah. You know, for us, you know, sending our own boats over there, um, it's quite logistically, you know, it's, it's difficult and. Uh, four-day event, but you know we're we're really really surprised. You know we've we've been a big supporter of the ISF Sailing World Cup over the years, and I think we've done almost every event since its inception. And yeah, wow. um, you know we uh, it was great it was great to see what the future of sport can will, will bring. And um, I guess we're looking forward to to this year's World Cup, and hopefully they can make it bigger and better um, from from last year. It was also nice to win a little bit of money to help pay for the cost as well. <laughs> yeah, that never hurts. I think a lot of people don't realise how much. Uh, the, the money train just keeps going around and around and around. Uh, but but that said, with the World Cup, you, you won't be heading to Parma. I think your first event for this season will be here. Yeah, it will be. We've got our Worlds a little bit later mm. um, this year in, in Israel in October. So we decided to um, spend a little bit more time at home. That's a good um, idea. It's been a pretty full-on full on year last year. And, and this year, you know, coming into the Games, we're, we're looking to, to spend pretty much from March to November and Short, short period back in Australia and with our Worlds next year in February mm-hmm. in Argentina and, and then obviously the European season starting, we, um, we'll spend very little time at home. So we decided to take a little bit more of a break to our own you know, personal training and then start on the tour again and uh, it'll pretty much be a, a run up until the Games. So that makes it even sweeter having been able to spend the Nationals at home. I guess that's the start of your little, your little holiday, which is, which is really nice. Not that you guys ever take a holiday, but a holiday of sorts, <laughs> um, which is just great to see. But congratulations on everything that you and Will and Victor, I'm not going to um, exclude him by any means, have achieved in the past year. It's, um, it's definitely a great stepping stone going forward. Yeah, no, thank you. Um, you know, we, 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 we love doing what we're doing and... Um, you know, it's fantastic to have the support that we have and we're just you know, fortunate to be able to spend the days on the water instead in the office and you know, we're, we're working hard so it's, um, everything's about the games and we're um, just trying to yeah, do as well as we can and, and see how we go. No, I don't think anybody can doubt that you guys work your butts off, that's for sure, <laughs> but everybody is behind you so, um, so keep going and I can't wait to see how, how the season in front of you unfolds and good luck with everything uh, coming forward into the, the qualification for 2016. I can't believe we're already saying that. It's 2015 already. I know. It's, uh, I think uh, the first couple of events, uh, beginning of the season, you know, the Olympic selection starts. So uh, obviously ticking the, the first box to, to um, qualify Australia, which we did in the last year's world. Um, yeah. you know, the second one is obviously just trying to secure the spot and mm-hmm. uh, then we're ready to go. So fingers crossed. Oh, fingers are crossed, toes are crossed, everything's crossed, and I'm very, very excited for you guys. And hopefully, I'll be able to catch up with you again very soon with with a few more fantastic. Uh, we won't say results, but we'll say ticking of the boxes under your belt. <laughs> Sounds good. We did too many events to worry about the results. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Well, have an amazing season, and all my best to Will and Victor as well. Sounds good. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, <laughs>
This is Nick Douglas, Adventures of a Sailor Girl, and for the first time this year, I've managed to catch up with Matt Belcher. Welcome home, Matt. <laughs> yeah, thanks. It's uh, yeah, nice, nice to be back. My uh, my wife and uh, son have been away uh, in Europe basically for for the last six months. So I think we arrived this morning and. I'm looking forward to a bit of a rest now. Oh, I bet you are, because what a year. Firstly, congratulations on taking out the ISAF World Championships in Santander with your crew, Will, and making it back-to-back -back World Championships. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, we've had, um, yeah, we've had a, 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 certainly a busy year, um, both um, for myself individually, but you know, for Will and I. Um, we had a great season last year, and you know, there was a lot of expectation, a bit of pressure placed, uh, you know, placed on ourselves to, to repeat what we did last year. And, you know, um, yeah, to come away this year with, with a pretty big, um, pretty big gold and uh, and then the Europeans and the world, yeah, we couldn't we couldn't ask for any more. We're in pretty good shape. Yeah, I don't think you could. And and as well as that, you know, one of the main goals of the of the World Championships, it, especially the ISAF Worlds, is to qualify the nation for Rio. You've done that clearly with flying colours. Um, going into the medal race with a twelve point lead, uh, you know, how did how did that feel? It was, I mean, uh, with, with the medal race. You can never really have too many points unless you get to the 18, 19 points, which is really what everyone's trying to uh, trying to get because then you you basically guaranteed uh, guaranteed a win. Yeah. Um, I mean, for us, it was it was a pretty pretty unique championship, as you said before. You know, qualifying Australia um, for the first opportunity is, is pretty um, is it, great. You know, that was that was our main goal going into it, and we just you know we're happy that we were able to to do that on the first attempt. And um, the event for us, you know, it was um, probably one of the most difficult events we've we've raced in. Yeah. Um, I think on day five, we're still in qualification phase. We'd only done four races. So we actually did the final series of the Worlds um, in one and a half days. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it sat well on the last one and a half days. We're pretty happy. And we certainly didn't expect to, to have those, to have the, you know, points buffer going from the race. But, you know, we, um, we started really well and we're just really happy that it all worked out. Yeah, definitely. It was a tough event for many people with long days and then also the medal races. We were lucky here, I mean, all over the world that we were able to watch all of the medal races for all the classes because they were streaming. But that was an incredibly tricky course in itself with the buildings surrounding the racetrack. Yeah, it was, was really difficult. Um, it really just depended on uh, the direction that you had on, on you know, for your your medal race and for us we had uh, a northerly um, which meant that it was basically you know, straight off, off the buildings and yeah. some pretty big shifts um, for us we just wanted to make sure we, we knew where the Croatian team were which is uh, in second position um, going before the medal race and we were just sort of following them and we worked out quite uh, quite heavily at the one side and we certainly were not expecting to be up there at the top mark yeah. um, with the amount of attacks that we did so it was a little bit of a surprise to Sometimes it goes, you know, it goes your way, and um, yeah, it was a pretty clean race for us. Amazing! So, not only have you qualified the nation and won two, oh, and won back-to-back -back world championships, which makes two world championships chip wins for Will. It makes six world championship wins for yourself in the class in in four seventies, but seventeen for your coach Victor. Amazing! How you know? How did he feel after the event? Because I know that you guys work very closely as a unit. <laughs> Um, you know, how did it feel yeah. to win another Worlds for, with him? <laughs> um, I mean, really, really special. I mean, it's because we travel so much together and, um, you yeah, know, we've got a really good 470 squad for Australia and yeah, we've had a lot of success with um, our class, you know, since the Sydney Games and, yeah. and then in Beijing and, and then obviously London. You know, we're just, we're just working hard and, um, you yeah, know, we've got an amazing relationship with Victor and, and with the other Australian sailing team members. Yeah. It's just, um, you yeah, know, when we win, um, you yeah, know, they win. Everyone's yeah. really proud that... Uh, we're able to, to come away. Unfortunately, I've only got uh, five world championships. I have to correct you because now oh, sorry. Got, uh, the <laughs> so I've got a couple more years to go. Um, but you know, it's uh, yeah, pretty pretty special. That is amazing. Like any any one world championship uh, is, is an amazing achievement. Oh, definitely. Any any world championships in any sport is is a hard fought feat. But in sailing, as many will know, with so many variables involved, uh, you know, it's it's. You know, it's quite tough to get there, and especially in the 470 class, which is not easy either. Yeah, it's uh, it's not not easy, but you know, in saying that, um, we've got a great system, and you know, I think there's such a huge part of that. Um, he's been he's been with me um, you know, since the start of my career, and um, for him to be able to mentor me for I think 10 years, it's good to be able to win the first one, and <laughs> we're just uh, yeah, really enjoying what we're doing, and we're really defining areas of of our sailing and. Um, both within our class and, and also individually, it's uh, you yeah, know it's pretty pretty cool. But it's a really special relationship with Will, and he's uh, you yeah, know he's really stepped it up. Um, you know, trying to, to come in um, and fill the shoes of Malcolm 
Yeah. Yeah, two times in the big gold medal, six times world champion. It's yeah. not, a, not an easy, uh, <laughs> not an easy thing. And he's, you know, he's sounding amazing to me, and uh, yeah, we're just really enjoying what we're doing. And you guys have gelled so nicely. And, and speaking about, you know, the, I mean, the world's at the end of this amazing season that you guys have had together. And just backtracking a little bit to Rio, uh, you did take out the test event at the Olympic venue as well, which. I mean, how, how did that feel? How did you enjoy the actual Olympic venue? It's a bit of build-up now going into Rio. Yeah, there, there is. And um, that, that was actually the first time that I, I'd been there. And, and Victor and Will had, had been the year uh, previously, um, I, the, the birth of my son. So I yeah. uh, decided to, to stay home and didn't, didn't want to miss that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, we coming into the event, um, there was a lot of surprises for us in, in Rio. A lot had been said about the, the water quality and, and you know, the, the general culture and what to expect, and, and a little bit of the safety side of things, and um, and you know, the for us we're, we're really fortunate. We're majority of the time. I think we did um, seven of the eight races uh, on the outer course. Yeah. Which uh, which meant that we had really big waves. You know, quite quite stable breeze. Um, still significant amount of current, but we didn't really have uh, any of the rubbish or, or the issues um, with the water quality because we we're out in the ocean. But. Um, so I guess we're fortunate from, from that side. Um, they've got a lot, lot to do to, to clean it up. But yeah. you know, in saying that, the, the venue is the venue's amazing. You know, to really um, diverse sailors is, is going to win there for, for sure. I mean, you've got three, and a, three metre seas offshore, oh. uh, one and a half knots of current inshore. Um, you know, really, really tidal conditions, very complex um, mm. area to race. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I, um, I really enjoyed my time there. And for Will and I, it was, it was important to get a good result. Just, you know, just for confidence to know yeah. we can perform on Olympic waters and we'll try and build on that so in the years to come. Definitely. Well, if, if you're looking to build confidence, you've definitely done that this season and, uh, and, and you've made your mark. I said last week on the show that you guys have, have seemed to have you know, solidified your places as the people to beat, essentially. And so it's, it's a different way of sailing as well when you're always trying to stay ahead of the ball game. Because again, before Rio, you, did, you made it back-to-back -back European championships. So it's been an awesome year. Yeah, it's, uh, it, we're, we're pretty we're pretty happy, but you know, as, as any of the, the Olympic guys know, that um, you know, it's all about the it's all about the games, and you know, <laughs> we're just, we're using these events and, and trying to build our confidence and try and get to a new level, and you know, and fingers crossed we can um, you know, deliver the result that we want and, and uh, everyone expects. Yeah, well, I think you're giving yourselves every opportunity to do so, not just uh, within your own unit of you and Will, but with Victor as well. And as you mentioned, the Australian sailing team, there's so many people working so hard behind the scenes. And I know at the ISAF World Championships, you had a full contingent there with physiotherapists and, you know, the whole team there. And it's so much larger than, than just the sailors, as you mentioned. Yeah, it is. Um, and the Australian sailing team is, is, you know, it's basically our family. You know, we, yeah. we travel so much together and um, we've known each other, a lot of the members in the team, for, for a you know, very long time. And in particular, coming into to London, we're all roughly the same, same age group and, and had the same sort of experience. And, um, yeah, that was an amazing, amazing feeling and, and probably one of the biggest drivers for me to keep going was to be able to use that, um, you know, that collective team experience and yeah. try and develop and, and get to a new, new area of sailing. And, you know, for us as a team, to have Rio um, as a big group and then to be able to make it, I guess, even bigger and Santander um, with the rest of the team, it was was pretty cool because it meant that we, you know, we had five to six weeks as a group. Yeah. And we were able to, um, yeah, just prepare as a team and, you know, we're in pretty good shape. But, um, yeah, it was, was a great experience. Oh, it's so exciting. It just puts a massive smile on my face. I'm so happy for you guys that all of the hard work and effort that you're putting in you know, across the board, you know, on behalf, you know, on, on behalf of the Australian sailing team, if I'm allowed to do that, it's so nice that all the effort that everyone's putting in is is um is going so well so far uh, as we're about halfway through the the lead up to Rio. But thanks so much for taking the time to catch up with me, Matt. I know you only flew in this morning, so. <laughs> no, I mean thanks, uh, thanks for the work that, that you're putting in. It's um, you know, I listen to your podcast and uh, oh, awesome. you know, it's, it's great to uh, yeah, it's great to be able to hear the hear the stories and and obviously hear the. Yeah, you know, um, the, the other sailors, or what what they're doing around the world from different backgrounds. It's um, yeah, it's it's pretty cool. It's all about sharing the stories, isn't it? And gosh, you're going to have some good ones to tell in a few years. <laughs> well, you already do. Thanks, to, thanks, Nicole. Yeah. So, um, good luck with it all. Thanks so much. Pleasure catching up with you as always, Matt. And and we'll be right back after this break here on Adventures of a Sailor Girl with with me, Nick Douglas, on Sunset Radio.
I'm up at Port Stephens for the 470 Nationals, which wrapped up today. I'm here with the winner and also our, our gold medalist from London 2012, Matt Belcher. How was the four days for you? Uh, it was a difficult four days. Um, I mean, it's a great preparation for us because we're about to head to Europe in three weeks. So, you know, another regatta, another championship, and being the Nationals. So, um, yeah, it's a really an important event and one of the, the highest profile events that we have in Australia. So, you know, to come away with another National Championship win and I think it's Will's first. So, it's, uh, yeah, fantastic. It's a great way to, to basically cap off the summer here in Australia to really seal the deal with your new partnership. You've done so well. I mean, we've had South Melbourne and South Sydney, and it's looking like it's going to be a great season for you in Europe. What are you expecting when you head over there? Uh, a lot of uh, angry Europeans, I think, <laughs> trying to really um, you know, lay down the gauntlet. First event um, for the 2016 cycle and certainly the way Mel and I finished off uh, the last Olympic cycle, um, you know, the motivation for them is to really you know, try and stop that domination. And um, you know, Will and I have got a, we're going to have a tough time, but we've got a lot of work to do. And, you know, as you said, we've had a fantastic summer and we're really getting on well. And, We've got a lot of development that we need to do, so it's, yeah, it's great for our confidence and we just work hard and focus on ourselves and see what happens. For sure, and it's, it's great to see boats like uh, Angus Galloway and also the Crawford stepping up and perhaps taking that training partner role where Will Ryan came from. So, you know, what does that mean to your campaign going forward? Uh, it means a lot, actually. I mean, the, just, you know, it's like those of you, four, four years ago, we were at the same situation and the, the talent and, and what we have in the fleet is fantastic. You know, it's a lot more than we had four years ago. and and uh, you know it's a fantastic position to be able to campaign with the position that we've got. People like Angus and you know and Tim so fantastic this week. Uh, the Crawford brothers also um, we do a lot of training with them. Um, the Conways you know, and and young guys you know, like Tom Clemens. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, fantastic. The guys still in school and beat us in two races yesterday <laughs> at a one and a two. So you know it's fantastic. It's a great position to be in for the class. Um, it is Australia's most successful sailing class. So yeah, we look forward to keep the results as they have been and. And uh, yeah, who knows what will happen. And hopefully a little bit more growth in the class. I mean, 14 votes here at the Nationals. I'm not sure how many you had last year, but that's definitely good for, uh, for this class, I think. It's more than we had at South Melbourne or South Sydney. So. Yeah, it is. The 470s have always sort of struggled with numbers. It's such a technical class. Um, and, you know, the guys that are in the class are you know, more or less professionals. So it's not really a class that you want to... So on a weekend, uh, oh, I guess, it's hard you know, work. <laughs> two Olympic champions we had here, and you know, there's, there's not many uh, Olympic champions sailing in the fleet, and two out of the 14, it's, you know, it's, it's fantastic. Yep. So yeah, we'd like to grow that a little bit more, but we also like to build the you know the fleet and the talent that we have, and we're certainly doing that. So it's exciting times. For sure. And for those people in Sydney, the state championships will be on the first weekend in March, so they might be able to get a bit of a look at the 470s sailing out of Middle Harbour. Yeah, certainly come down, say hello. Um, we'll be on the harbour, try and stay out of the way a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we'll certainly you know, enjoy it and yell out our names and follow us and you know, we are uh, always welcome. Definitely. The club. And the 50 year reunion, I know you're not going to be able to make it because you'll be heading over to Europe, but that's on the 15th of March, uh, I believe. Yeah, 16th, 16th of March, of March. Yeah. On, that, on that evening. So if, if people want to have a look at that as well, they'll. I'm sure there'll be some old classics out there on absolutely, the water. Absolutely. <laughs> I've heard that Mike Fletcher might be sailing with Karen Gonich. Yeah. I, I, do I don't know, that? but I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, we'll miss you there, but good luck. All the best in your.